Donald Trump attacks judge, attorney general in fiery fraud trial testimony Trump rarely gave a straight answer, using a state attorney's inquiries instead to attack his political enemies in open court. Donald Trump's testimony at his $250 million. Civil fraud trial quickly devolved into an attack on the court's judge, the attorney general and even President Joe Biden. The former president took the stand Monday morning in a packed Manhattan courtroom sporting a blue tie and powder blue shirt under a navy suit. Kevin Wallace of the attorney general's office peppered Trump with questions about his inflated assets, the process of compiling his financial statements and catching fraud within the Trump organization. But Trump rarely gave him a straight answer all morning, using the inquiries instead to attack his political enemies in open court. He started with New York Attorney General Letitia James, who brought the case against Trump and his company last year. I think she's a political hack, Trump said of James. I think she used this case to try to become governor and she successfully used it to become attorney general. It's a disgrace that a case like this is going on. Trump rambled beyond his rantings about the merits of James's case. He even took a swipe at President Joe Biden when he suggested he did a great job of leading the country compared to Biden. The question that prompted that response was whether or not Trump agreed that his assets were overstated on his statements of financial conditions. When Wallace asked it again, Trump, attorney Alina Haba objected, asked and answered, she said, no, it has not been answered, Judge Arthur Engeron boomed back. It has been asked, but it has not been answered. After several efforts by Wallace, Trump said he did not agree with the attorney general's assessment. Wallace followed up by asking Trump if he agreed with Engeron's September summary judgment that came to the same conclusion. Trump shifted the aim of his vitriol to the judge. He ruled against me before he knew anything about me, Trump yelled. He called me a fraud and he didn't know anything about me. It's a terrible thing you've done. You knew nothing about me. You believe this political hack back there, Letitia James, and that's unfortunate. Trump continued berating the judge, rather than addressing Wallace's question. Time equals, 400 ms, greater than the former president began testing Ingeron's patience shortly after he took the stand Monday morning. Thanks to Trump's refusal from the jump to answer Wallace's question succinctly. When Wallace asked Trump if the valuation of his Nike Town property was correct, Trump wouldn't answer. Instead, he insisted repeatedly that he wouldn't sell it for that number. It took three tries for Wallace to get an answer. I guess so, Trump finally admitted. I really can't answer that. I guess so. It's a number I wouldn't sell it for. The judge, who by then had already asked Trump's lawyers numerous times to control him and suggested they step outside, had enough, Mr. Kais, can you control your client? This is not a rally, Engeron said to Trump's lead attorney Chris Kais. We'll be here forever and we'll accomplish nothing. Maybe you should have a talk with him right now. Time equals, 400 ms, greater than after another offense. Engeron implored Kais once more to have a word with the former president, Mr. Kais, that was a simple yes or no question, Engeron said. We got another speech. I beseech you to control him if you can. If you can't, I will. I will excuse him and draw every negative inference. That I can. Trump lawyer Alina Habba spoke up, offering that everyone was in the courtroom to hear what the former president had to say. Engeron exploded. No, I am not here to hear what he has to say, the judge yelled. He told Trump's lawyers to sit down. He's here to answer questions. Trump chimed in out of turn from the witness stand. This is a very unfair trial, he said, and I hope the public is watching. Between his political attacks, Trump repeated a series of arguments he's made to the media about the case's validity. Among them was the claim that the disclaimer clause in his financial statements should absolve him of potential fraud. Trump on numerous occasions brought up the clause on his own accord, often dodging Wallace's intended subject matter to do so. We have a disclaimer clause that says do your own due diligence, don't under any circumstances count on anything here because they're done in accordance with the owner's projections, Trump said in response to a question about whether he approved of his employees' work on the financial statements. The Attorney General's office claims that Trump's fraudulent 
Financial statements were instrumental in him getting better loan conditions, which stiffed banks on more than $168 million in lost interest, according to an expert witness. But to the court on Monday, Trump called the disclaimer the worthless statement clause, implying that the banks did their own research when mulling over his loan conditions and barely relied on his financial statements at all. Some people call it the worthless statement clause, Trump said, adding that it meant the banks can look at the statement, but you must do your own due diligence. He said trials like this one are the reason he implemented the clause in the first place. That's why we have a disclaimer clause, if there's a mistake. So, you don't have to get sued by the Attorney General of New York, Trump joked. It's an argument that Trump has made again and again throughout the course of the trial. But it's also one that Engeron already ruled on in his September summary judgment. In defendant's world, rent-regulated apartments are worth the same as unregulated apartments. Restricted land is worth the same as unrestricted land. Restrictions can evaporate into thin air. A disclaimer by one party casting responsibility on another party exonerates the other. Parties lies, Engeron wrote in the 35-page opinion. That is a fantasy world, not the real world. Despite that, Trump continued to push the idea that he was devoid of any blame when it came to his financial statements since the banks didn't care about them. I've had a lot of cash for a long time, Trump said, adding, that's all they cared about. All in all, Trump stood by the accuracy of his statements of financial condition, despite the judge's ruling that they were inflated. He claimed just the opposite, that the documents, in many cases, lowballed the true value of his assets. Time equals, 400 ms, greater than, I think that the statements of financial condition were very good, were actually somewhat conservative and, in some cases, very conservative, Trump said. Trump was excused from the witness stand Monday afternoon after around four hours of testimony. His daughter, Ivanka Trump, will take the stand on Wednesday after a failed bid to evade testimony altogether. She will be the Attorney General's office's final witness before the defense starts calling their own. Trump's attorneys said Monday that they will make a mistrial motion this week, and plan to cross-examine Ivanka Trump on Thursday. Kais gave a tentative end date to the trial, December 15, a week ahead of schedule.